it is nice to see you all again and here are some of the latest news from ASEAN region with me, Vanessa. Shinano Guzman thanks the contribution of Australian Organization for the independence of Timor-Leste. On August 7, 2023, Union 8 Abroad, APEDA, holds a meeting with Timorese Prime Minister Karela Shanana Guzman, and after the meeting, Shanana explained that the point of discussions was to continue consolidating both countries' existing relations, as previously the Union Abroad APEDA has demonstrated its solidarity and great support to Timor-Leste while struggling for independence. <laughs> They are not new, but when we struggled at war, they had stood by our side, defending our rights. There were so much trouble and difficulties during the war. They supported us. I thank them, and now they came back to us in order to strengthen our relationship wholeheartedly. Yes. Whole Union 8 brought a head representative, vows to continue maintaining the existing relationship stronger in the future. Um, have had the Prime Minister elected in May, we congratulated on a successful election and we talked about how we can work together in the, in the future and, and what part Australia can play um, to assist and continue the friendship and the ties that have been built. And we talked about the history and the independence of Timor-Leste and we talked about um, our future relationship. By taking the same chance, Union 8 Abroad APEDA congratulated Timorese Prime Minister Karela Shanan who had gained trust by Timorese people to lead the ninth government for the next five years. Malaysia's ambassador to Timor-Leste says Malaysia ready to support Timor-Leste. Malaysian ambassador to Timor-Leste, Marjit Sarjit Singh, holding a meeting with Timorese Prime Minister Karela Shanan Guzman and discussed the further cooperation between both countries. During the meeting, Shannon and Singh discussed as well as focused on how Malaysia support administrative decentralization process and the Timorese local authority power, especially in the planning and finance areas. I have met respectively with the Prime Minister Shannon Guzman and discussed all aspects of cooperation and so on, which is need to be maintained between Malaysia and Timor-Leste. Prime Minister has encouraged the importance of Timor-Leste's decentralization administration process. Two main aspects to which were encouraged by the Prime Minister were the planning and finance aspects. Menteri, uh, aspek planning, perancangan, dan finance. Through this meeting, Singh expressed the willingness of Malaysia to continue to strengthen the bilateral cooperation between both countries. Brunei Darussalam and Timor Leste to continue strengthen bilateral cooperation. On August 7, 2023, Wanhat Latif, the ambassador of Brunei Darussalam to Timor-Leste, met with Timorese Prime Minister Karel Shanon Guzman and discussed the bilateral cooperation between both countries. On this meeting, Latif also congratulates Timorese Prime Minister Karel Shanon Guzman, who have been trusted by Timorese people to lead the ninth government. So uh, today's courtesy call is uh, to congratulate uh, the Prime Minister uh, uh, as, uh, uh, for his uh, recent uh, uh, appointment as Prime Minister uh, of uh, Timor-Leste. Uh, Brunei Darussalam and uh, Timor-Leste have established diplomatic relations since 2002. Uh, our friendship is very good uh, and, uh, <clears throat> and uh, we are looking at uh, uh, how to further strengthen uh, this uh, good uh, bilateral uh, relation that we have with uh, Timor-Leste. Um, uh, 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 the Prime Minister uh, uh, is a good friend of uh, Brunei. He has visited Brunei uh, before and uh, he has a, a, a very good relationship uh, with uh, His Majesty. Uh. Timor-Leste and Brunei Darussalam established bilateral cooperation since 2022 until now. Cambodia inaugurates China-founded Third Green Road in capital Phnom Penh. Cambodia inaugurated the third ring road encircling parts of the capital Phnom Penh, which was built with concession alone from the Expert Import Bank of China. Cambodian Prime Minister Samdek Teko Hun Sen and Chinese Ambassador to Cambodia Wen Win Tian presided over the inauguration ceremony held in Kandal Province, Kian Suvai District, with approximately 8,000 participants. The 53-kilometer road, along with the two river bridges and two flyovers, was constructed by Shanghai Construction Group in a period of 52 months.
Hun Sen said the road was another testament to the fruitful cooperation between Cambodia and China under the frameworks of Belt and Road Initiative and a community with a shared future. The Cambodian leader added that the thoroughfare is also connected to many key roads including expressways. Ambassador Wong congratulated the completion of the Third Ring Road and praised the great development achievements of Cambodia. Cambodia can appoint Sun Manet as new Prime Minister. Cambodian King Norodom Sihamoni on Monday appointed Hun Manet as the new Prime Minister after incumbent Prime Minister Samdek Tok Hun Sen announced he was stepping down. The monarch signed a royal decree to designate Hun Manet 45 as the new Prime Minister for a five-year term government following a request from Hun Sen. Hun Manet along with his new cabinet members will need to win a vote of confidence in the National Assembly slated for August 22, 2023 in order to officially become the new Prime Minister and he is expected to sworn in on the same day. The appointment came after the ruling Cambodian People's Party CPP of Hun Sen won a landslide victory in the July 23 general election, gaining 120 out of 125 seats in the National Assembly. Hun Manet is currently a member of the CPP Standing Committee and the Deputy Commander-in-Chief of the Royal Cambodian Armed Forces. Hun Sen announced on July 26 that he will step down as the Prime Minister after having held the position for more than 38 years, handing the reins of power to his eldest son, Hun Manet. However, the 71-year-old leader said he'll remain the CPP's president and he will take the position as the president of the Senate in the Senate election on February 25th next year. Thailand water buffalo race kick starts rice cultivation season. Thailand farmers participated in an annual water buffalo race to mark the commencement of rice cultivation amidst the monsoon season. <laughs> Spanning various sizes, more than 60 buffaloes took part in the race along 200 meter deer track situated in the Napa sub district of Chonburi province, which is approximately 8 km or 50 miles to the southeast of the capital city of Bangkok. Samart Suksawan, the major of the Napa district, expressed his aspiration for this race to serve as a reminder of the buffalo's historical role in agriculture tracing back to the 1800s and as a gesture of gratitude towards this invaluable beast of burden. <laughs> Even though Thailand has officially entered the rainy season in July, Thai rice farmer Sambon Sumkit said there has been a noticeable reduction in rainfall this year, adding that elders in the area predicted an impending severe drought. The meteorological department has projected a 5% reduction in rainfall indicating an imminent adverse influence of the El Niño climate phenomenon. Residents applaud Green Road inauguration in Cambodian capital. Cambodian Prime Minister Samdek Teko Hun Sen and local residents in Kandal province applauded inauguration of the third ring road encircling parts of the capital Phnom Penh. The new road will not only reduce traffic jams but also promote trade, investment, logistics and tourism. Local people said the road has improved their daily transportation and they're grateful for Chinese people helping them develop the infrastructure. Hun Sen and Chinese ambassador to Cambodia, Wan Wen Tian, presided over the inauguration ceremony held in Kandal province, Kiansvai district, with approximately 8,000 participants. The 53-kilometer road, along with the two river bridges and two flyovers, was constructed by the Shanghai Construction Group in a period of 52 months. Typhoon Kano leaves damage after it passing in Japan. Typhoon Kanun pounded Japan's southwestern Okinawa and Kagoshima prefectures with heavy rain and gusty winds for a second straight day, leaving two dead and moving so slowly its damaging impact could be prolonged. Eyewitness footage showed an uprooted tree in Okinawa's capital Naha as the storm continued to track west towards Taiwan. The Japan Meteorological Agency said Kanun, which means jackfruit in Thailand, was heading slowly northwest in the East China Sea with sustained winds of 162 km per hour or 100 m per hour and gusts of up to 234 km per hour or 145 m per hour. 
The storm is predicted to make a sudden sharp turn to the east later this week and starts heading for Japan's main islands. Spanish actor Son acknowledges the horrible killing of Colombian cosmetic surgeon on Thailand Island tourist. Talent media has reported that the son of famous Spanish actor Rudolfo Sancho has admitted to murdering and dismembering a Colombian cosmetic surgeon on Thailand's Koh Phangang before attempting to cover up the crime. Police said that 29-year-old Spaniard Daniel Sancho Broncalo has also admitted to dumping other body parts in the sea. More human remains were discovered in a hotel room where the killing is believed to have taken place. Daniel Sancho Broncalo tried to cover up the crime by lying about where he stayed. He double-booked his accommodation and had it all planned as he earlier purchased items such as knives, garbage bags and cleaning products. The confession comes after human remains were found at a landfill on the island well known for tourists for its full moon parties. According to local broadcaster Thai PBS, CCTV footage showed Sancho Broncalo and 44-year-old Colombian Edwin Arieta Arteaga on a bike together days before the remains were discovered. NationTalent.com said police said Broncalo and Arteaga were lovers. International volunteers provided excellent services and promote China's culture at Chengdu University. A group of international volunteers have provided excellent services and promoted Chinese culture to visiting athletes at the ongoing 31st FISU World University Games in Chengdu of Southwest China Sichuan Province. Nin Taishi, an international volunteer from Nepal, helped badminton player Lohani Sulav, a fellow countryman, to customize a shirt because the one Lohani brought did not comply with the contest regulations. Yeah, he, he is a good uh, friend as well as a good brother for us and helping us uh, a lot. And he is uh, providing us information about the uh, about the about the event. Personally, it is very good. This is my first time in China for the subway. It is very good. I have very good experience. I found very smooth and. Uh, the people around here in the subway is it makes us very easy. The volunteers come from Nepal, Indonesia, Malaysia and many other countries aiming to provide the best possible services while showcasing the vitality, exuberance and cultural uniqueness of the host city. During the period of studying in Chengdu, volunteers made a great progress in learning Chinese and even knows Sichuan dialect. Deeply attracted by Chengdu, they tried to record her life and thoughts before the university game started. Thank you so much everyone for having watched today's episode. Have a lovely weekend and we will see you all again sooner. Bye!